Hello! Last time we have determined that we can plot a spectrum of the nodes as you can see here and we can see manually inspect and see that there is a fundamental frequency and harmonics and we can tell that we are playing a G. However, the next question comes up is for if we were to write an app that recognizes what note is being played, do we really want to depend on basically this? Like, there are so many peaks and the highest peak is not even at the fundamental frequency. Like, what can we do about this? And the answer is cross-correlation theorem. What we want to do is we go and we search for the cross-correlation theorem. We find a page on it. In this case, Wolfram Math World has a page on it. So if small f and small g are the time domain cross-correlation functions uh, that we take the well, functions that we take the cross-correlation of, then the answer is down here where to take the cross-correlation, we can use, we can take the Fourier transform of both functions and then take the conjugate of one of them and multiply that together and take the inverse Fourier transform and that gives us the cross correlation in the time domain. So we're going to make use of this because to take the Fourier transform is a relatively, uh, it's faster than doing a cross correlation one by one by one by one, like just shifting across. It is oftentimes faster to do this instead particularly for periodic functions, but we don't care in this case. We'll have some uh, other peaks that we don't necessarily want, but the answer will still be there. So what we are doing today is we need to open up the file from last time, this test, uh, just because it runs faster. And then what we do is um, we will copy this keyboard thing that we did last time, just so that we can uh, so just copy this keyboard function and then the other thing to copy is this this line uh, we will put it uh, just before here just before the figure plot and instead of ft.notelist we'll just do notelist so remove the ft dot and then finally the other item to do is so copy this line and we will paste it just before this plot function. Of course, we will update the labels. And this label is also out of date. All right, so we have the label here. We will do freakpow.max and then we will also do the leg, uh, label equals signal power as we did last time and then finally copy paste this legend line over there as well and then uh, also remove the ft dot from note list so that we have that so we have uh, we have the code updated now oh I forgot to rename the file but whatever so I don't think we're going to use it again anyway. Actually, let's just go ahead and save as, because I already saved it over, but whatever. Test5.py, okay. Good enough, fair enough. So we have this, okay. We are plotting. Now, let's see what we want to do here. The other thing we want to do is um, over here, well, there's quite a few files that I've been just working on while um, between making these videos is a, uh, I just practiced doing this before making this video. So violin, notice what we've been working with. This is a G on the G string of the violin. All right. Now I made a second file. This is a slightly different note. Listen to it. Okay, so we can hear that it's a little bit more sharp than the other note. Let's listen to them again, just so we have an idea. All right, so basically the first note is a G. The next note is like uh, just a little bit higher. So it is just a little bit different than the first note. So the goal here is we're going to read in the second file 
and we are going to compare the two spectra using the cross correlation theorem that we just read about. What we do now is we do something very similar, but we put two after everything. PyDub.audio segments dot from file. Let's see, note two dot mp3 is what I named the file. Then we do samples equals numpy dot array seg dot let's see get array of samples actually seg two dot get array of samples i could have copy pasted <laughs> i like typing though samples and this should be samples two by the way samples two equals samples two dot reshape minus one seg two dot channels and then sample rate is going to be the same i clipped it from the same file so this stuff stays the same, the shift factor stays the same. Window samples we will need to redo, we, uh, the, not redo, but do the second one. Samples 2, 0 through t's dot shape 1, 0. And then window samples 2 equals window samples 2 dot reshape 1 minus 1. Okay, so we have the window of samples from the first one and from the second one. Product is there, we'll do product product 2 equals window samples 2 times shift factor now frequency coefficient 2 equals product 2 dot sum axis equals 1 I'm basically just copying the same thing as we had before freak pal 2 equals numpy dot absolute freak coef 2 squared okay so that's all fine now the other thing we want to do, so we'll take this and we'll copy paste. Yes, I do copy paste uh, when it's when not much has changed. So and then we'll name this spectrum two. So and then uh, yeah, we'll leave this as is right now. So we'll run this. I just hit the F five key in case anyone's wondering. So that's done. So spectrum is this, and then spectrum two is this. So you can see. From the spectrum, we can tell this is uh, approximately a G sharp, and then the original note was a G. So, um, but the spectrum otherwise looks very similar. It's just a little bit shifted. We can use the cross correlation theorem on it. Now, what we do here is um, the whoops, accidentally right click things. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is we want to actually calculate the cross correlation. So what we do is uh, we follow the tutorial here, not the tutorial, this is the derivation, right? So we do this, we take the Fourier transforms of things. So F underscore stands for Fourier transform in our case. Known equals numpy dot FFT dot FFT. So we take the Fourier transform and we give it the frequency coefficients. And we are using the frequency coefficients and not the power because the frequency coefficients have the phase information. And I'm thinking we might have more information available to us if we keep the phase rather than if we just take the amplitude. So, and then we do F signal. So the known is our calibration value and the signal is our unknown that we don't know yet, supposedly FFT dot FFT freak coef two. So that's our signal, all right, F core. So this is the, this will be the frequency domain uh, cross correlation. So we take the F known dot conj times the f signal and uh, the conj is the the bar over here above the f it tells us to take the complex conjugate so then we can do core equals numpy dot fft dot ifft this will take the inverse Fourier transform f core and then so now we have it core is our va variable that has the information that we need so what we need to do is uh, peak log equals core, actually numpy dot absolute. We take the absolute value of core dot arg max. So that'll tell us where is the maximum of the absolute of core. Okay, and then the peak itself is numpy dot absolute core peak log. So that will give us the peak value itself. And then the SNR, we will calculate the signal to noise ratio is equal to peak divided by the numpy dot absolute core dot uh, core dot mean. Um, uh, to be honest, I'm not really sure whether the mean goes inside or outside this parenthesis, but who cares? It'll give us an approximate value. 
So now we're going to print a couple of things. We'll print peak at and then plus D steps dot format peak lock. So the plus D will tell it to put a plus sign in front of the decimal number. Decimal just means base 10. It doesn't mean that it has a decimal point. Okay, so then we will print the SNR as well. Format SNR. Let's see if that works. So I'll hit F5 to run this code. So it looks like we have a pretty good SNR and the peak is at plus 10 steps. Which, guess what that means? And let us look at the correlation that actually... Oh, that's from last time. Okay, let us plot the correlation actually. pp.figure and then pp.title cross correlation and then we'll do pp.x label x label let's see uh, note steps and these aren't musical steps these are the point one that we used earlier that's y label cross correlation magnitude or amplitude, I'm probably sure what word. So you know, pp dot plot. So we will plot note list and then the core. So that will, and then we do save fig, and then we name it core dot png dpi equals three hundred, and then pp dot close. So we'll run that. Run. That's the F5. Oh, I forgot. Okay, so this gives us the warning that we are plotting a complex value. We need to take the absolute value of this because uh, let me show you. So right now we just accidentally plotted non-absolute value. And actually, so this is the complex. It only plots the real component. And as you can see, this is like garbage. Like, I mean, it's not garbage, but it's this tells us nothing about the uh, about the cross correlation. I mean, it tells us a little bit. We can see there's a peak, but like, whoa, like, okay, this is not quite right. The peak is, by the way, the peak will be off if we take this one uh, without taking the absolute value. The peak will be at like 12 steps instead of 10, and 10 is the correct value. So uh, I know because I did this before making the video. <laughs> All right, so we open this. Ah, much better. So this is the cross correlation. Uh, and particularly, this is the magnitude of the cross correlation. So we can see that it's here. And uh, if we take the peak, then of course we we have a peak which is plus 10, which is great. It means we have, and we have a very good SNR as well, signal to noise ratio. And the key point here is that we were able to take the known. We took a calibration set of samples. So suppose you take a violin and you play the G string on the violin. Well, now we can use this algorithm to take the Fourier transform of that or to process it into the node spectrum first and then take the Fourier transform of that, take the complex conjugate of that, and that is our calibration value. We can use that to detect other notes that the same violin plays. So now when you play G sharp, we have, the software tells us, oh, you're playing one musical half step above the calibration value. So if we know what the calibration note was, G in our case, then we can add a half of a musical step to it and we say, oh, you're playing a G sharp. Isn't this wonderful? <laughs> yeah, so I like this a lot. And if you're not playing violin, you're going to have the, a different set of harmonics. So it's not going to look the same in the spectrum, in the note spectrum. So all you would have to do then is we'll just make a different calibration set just to play or play some note that you know on a, a hopefully in tune, right? Say on a trumpet and try that and then play a different note and use the first notes calibration to determine how many steps of, uh, how many musical half steps away it is. So we can possibly maybe transcribe music this way. Now, the complicated bit is when we come to the point where we are needing to, uh, when we are having multiple, either multiple notes being played or multiple instruments, that is going to be, ugh, that is going to take some uh, figuring out possibly. It might not even be a deterministic answer at that point, but we'll cross that bridge when we, come to it. 
All right, well, now, now that we have all this prototyped in Python, I think um, a next step that we could take is we could convert this to Java, but we will do this in another video. Uh, but for now, thank you for tuning in and I hope to see you again.